Thank you. Very kind. Go ahead and just uh, judge me for a minute. Thank you. That was long enough. Because I'm judging you. I'm a judger. I fucking love to judge. I'm great at it. I have bad judgment, but I'm a great judger. I love to judge. I hate when people say, hey, don't judge, because I think, fuck you, don't take away my hobbies. <laughs> it's weird, because when I think about, like, I wasn't clear what I was going to do on this set, and I had this, um, this old set list. I was just going through my notebooks. And in the middle of a page in my notebook, like, I just write ideas down. But, I, like, after a while, you forget where they're from. And just sitting in the middle of a page of paper, by itself, just say, it just said autoerotic asphyxiation. That's all it said. So I gotta be in this moment where I'm like, what, what, when did I do that? Did I do that? Or did I just think of that? So I'm, I'm trying to, because I would remember if I tried that, right? That's a scary thing. You know? <laughs> and then I remember what it was, because autoerotic asphyxiation is really a hotel room thing. Like, no one's doing that at home. You know, I, I picture businessmen leaving on trips going, honey, where's that good belt I always bring? You know, the, the one with the weird notch? I don't know how it happened. <laughs> it's weird, maybe the luggage, but... Um, but then I kept thinking about it and I thought, you know, I think autoerotic asphyxiation was sort of invented in a hotel room. Because I travel a lot and I know some of you travel. And if you ever travel alone, even if it's for one night, at some point in that hotel room, you're going to be sitting by yourself and you're going to say, fuck, I want to kill myself. <laughs> and usually when I say that, about five minutes later, I think, no, nah, I'll just jerk off. So how long before you're like, hey, maybe we can bring these two things together. Let's take this masturbation thing to the next level. Let's do that. But look, I, I'm going to share a like, story. It's not a, it's, it's not a horrible, it's not a sad story, but I, but I almost died recently. Uh, in my head, I almost died. I should qualify that. Don't... Google mouth cancer images. <laughs> Do you need more than that? I, there's more of a story to it. Is, should I go ahead and follow that up or you want me to just leave it there? I just checked into a hotel in Cleveland and I was excited. I was looking forward to my lobby waffle in the morning. Uh, there's some fellow travelers. You know the feeling when you check into a hotel, you see that free breakfast bu buffet area and you eyeball that waffle maker. Some part of you thinks, hey, how bad could tomorrow be? At 9.58 tomorrow morning, two minutes before that buffet closes, I'm going to be making my own waffle. It's going to feel like my fucking birthday for 10 minutes. <laughs> so I'm doing that. I'm setting up. I'm getting ready. I'm doing some work. Getting ready to do the big work. Tweeting. Updating my status. You know, putting my slightly damaged, inconsistent brand out into the world for people to appreciate. How do we justify that as work? How is that? Are we, how are we all on Facebook and Twitter? Are we grown-ups? Are we grown-ups? Are we culturally seven? Are we seven? Have you ever had that moment where you're updating your status on Facebook and you realize, holy shit, every status update should just say, would someone please acknowledge me? <laughs> and then you wait it out. <laughs> like, yay! <laughs> so I'm doing that, I'm doing my work, updating my status, tweeting. And I'm eating licorice candy compulsively. That was my compulsive behavior du jour. I have a few of them. It's a short menu. I can eat compulsively, I can masturbate compulsively, or I can nap compulsively. I know that sounds like a contradiction, a compulsive nap, but it's such a thing as that. And uh, I also call them panic naps. Uh, a panic nap usually starts with something like this. Fuck, I gotta, God damn it, I'm tired. Um, <laughs> that's the beginning of a panic nap. So I'm eating these licorice candies and I feel something in my mouth that hurts. I'm like, what the hell is that? Did I bite my lip? What the fuck is that? Do I have a canker sore? What is that? So I go into the bathroom of my hotel room. I pull my lip down. There's these two reddish brown sores in my mouth. So of course I say, holy shit, is that mouth cancer? And in eight minutes, I went through all five stages of grief. Eight minutes. All right, first there's denial. That's not mouth cancer. Then anger, fuck, I have mouth cancer. And then bargaining, God, I know I haven't been that good or really <laughs> believed in you, but if you're there, could you please not make this mouth cancer? And then depression, I have mouth cancer. <laughs> and then finally, acceptance. I don't need my mouth. <laughs> so I go, I go back into my room and I take a panic nap that starts with, fuck, 
mouth cancer. God damn it. I got it. And then I, you know, sleep. I'm tired. <laughs> Sweat for 15, like, sweaty minutes. And I wake up and I'm like, I've got to make sure this is mouth cancer. I've got to do what any smart person would do. I have to Google mouth cancer images. Because you know how much doctors like it when you Google first. And you can just walk in and go, no test necessary, I'm fucking dying. <laughs> Google, yeah, of course, shut the fuck up. So I Google mouth cancer, and I look at every mouth cancer image available. It takes me 15 minutes. There's a big list of the shittiest things to do in the world for 15 minutes. Googling mouth cancer should be maybe number two, <laughs> right under sticking pins in your balls for no reason. <laughs> but I don't want to alienate the S&M crowd. I know you're emotionally insulated and need to hurt yourself to feel. So if you want to switch those two up, feel free. <laughs> so I look at every mouth cancer. Now here's the problem. I could not find my mouth cancer. All right, now I had a couple ways I could have gone in that moment. I chose this way. I have the rarest mouth cancer. <laughs> they don't even have photographs of my mouth cancer. I, sh I should take a picture of my mouth cancer and send it to the Google image people so they can update their resources. I want to help people. Maybe they could name it after me, like Maranoma. Maybe that's what this is. <laughs> and then some part of me says, dude, relax. You don't have mouth cancer. Take a breath. And I say, fuck you, we're dying. <laughs> And he says, no, seriously, just relax. There's nothing you can do about it now. Why don't you just take a breath? I'm like, shut up, man. We're fucking dying. And then he says, one of us has to stop talking. It's weird. You're alone. All right. <laughs> so I take a breath, and I start to think it through, and I do a little detective work. And I'm like, oh, shit, the licorice candies. I had a canker sore in my mouth, and the licorice candies just sort of dyed them brown, you know? <laughs> so I figured it out. And, and honestly, in that moment that I figured that out, I felt like I had beaten cancer. <laughs> yeah. The next morning, I woke out, I walked out of that hotel room with spring in my step and a new outlook on life. And I went down and made myself a lobby waffle. <laughs> and that was the best fucking waffle I'd ever tasted. You know why? Because I had survived <laughs> made up mouth cancer. Thank you very much. Good night.